Today we're going to do a quick tutorial on how to make your punched piece into a pillow slipcover. The first thing we do is take a fat quarter of fabric, we're using door wool, and we cut it in half to make two equal pieces, approximately 14 inches by 18 inches. Now we're going to take each piece and fold up our hem edge on the wider 18 inch side. I use these handy jumbo wonder clips which have measuring marks on them so I can get a nice even width hem. Now I like these clips because they are easy to measure with but if you prefer you can just straight pin the hem to prep for sewing. These straight pins are easy to maneuver through your sewing machine as you sew. Once you've pinned your first side, you're going to repeat the process with that second identical piece of fabric. Now once your pieces are both pinned together, we can take it to the sewing machine and we're just going to basically run a straight stitch down the edge of the hem. I usually tend to have my presser foot running along the raw edge to make sure that I keep a nice straight hem. You're going to remove the pins as you go so you don't damage your machine. <laughs> a nice straight hem. And now you're just going to repeat the process with your second piece. Now you're going to take your two pieces of folded fabric and you're going to set them over top of your punched piece. You're going to lay the first piece over about two-thirds of the way on top of it. Make sure that the top and the bottom have even amounts of fabric on each side. Then you're going to take your second piece. Make sure that the hem is facing upward so it, uh, when you fold it back around it's going to be on the right side. You're going to want to overlap about four inches and then you're going to do the same thing. Make sure that it's even on top and bottom and then you're going to get ready to pin everything down. You're going to want to pin really, really close to your punched edge. Uh, I usually start in the corners and I move along and just make sure that there's no puckering or gaps uh, just to make sure that everything is going to sew nice and tight up against your punched piece. Take our piece back to the sewing machine and I usually like to start right in the corner. Um, you're going to position your presser foot right up against your punched piece. You can kind of feel it through the fabric. Uh, make sure that your hands aren't in the way and make sure that the pin, the first pin isn't in the way as you begin to start sewing. I usually take my hand and just hold down that edge as I go so there's no puckering. And I'm also removing my pins as I go along uh, to make sure that that presser foot is setting right up against that punch piece and getting it sewn as close as possible to that punched edge. Once you get to the corner, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to position your needle down and pivot your fabric and then just go down the next edge. Sometimes when you get to the envelope flap, you might find that it catches on your presser foot. That's okay. Just lift up your presser foot and reposition it so it lays flat underneath and then continue to sew. Just go the entire perimeter around your pillow, going as close as possible, removing those pins as you go. So once you have your straight stitch all the way around the perimeter of the punched piece, you're going to want to create what's called a stay stitch. Uh, you can do this with another straight stitch or you can do it with a zigzag stitch on your machine if it offers that. Uh, and you're going to want to run that zigzag stitch or stay stitch right along the edge of your first straight stitch. Now I like to use the straight stitch as a guide and I use that um, along the presser foot so I can keep it nice and straight uh, around the entire perimeter of the pillow.
now that you have your stay stitch around the entire perimeter of your punched piece, you can go ahead and remove the excess fabric all the way around. Cut nice and close to the stay stitch, but just be aware not to cut through your stitches. Now that that excess cloth is removed, you have an inside out pillow cover. We just need to turn it the right side out. I like to start with the corners and I pull out the corners. I usually use my finger to kind of poke into the corner so it's nice and pointy. You can also use a poke stick if you need to do that. You're gonna do that with both of the corners on the first side. And then you're going to take your back and just fold it around. Just flip around the other side and you're going to poke those corners again. Get those exposed first, then you're just going to take the rest of it and flip it around. And now you have a nice little envelope pillow cover that you can put a pillow form into. You're gonna notice some exposed monk's cloth where the presser foot didn't quite set flush. So that can easily be covered up with a stylish whipped edge like these examples. Check out the tutorial on whip stitching for more info on that. So this particular project is a 10 inch by 10 inch project. For that, we're gonna use a 12 by 12 pillow form. The reason why we like to use the bigger pillow form is because it gives your pillow nice loft. Uh, otherwise, you would, if you use a 10 inch by 10 inch pillow form, it might be a little bit flat. Just make sure that your corners are tucked in to where they need to be. And even though you might need to fold it a little bit to get it shoved in there, that pillow form will fit right in. And now you just kind of straighten it out and you've got a nice little pillow to set with.